Hi everyone, my name is John Wood Raphael. Um, my sister Herlene asked me to uh, to join this prayer line to pray for healthcare workers. Uh, if you are in right now, um, I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer for all those who are working, for all those who are putting themselves in harm way, um, putting themselves, um, just, just, Putting themselves in a in a really tough position right now. Some people don't have uh, the right protective equipment. Some of them are just you know just thrown in into uh, in, into helping these people uh, who really need their help and they're really doing the best they can in uncomfortable situations with uncomfortable um, quarters. So we want to pray for their strength. We want to pray for their guidance, for their wisdom and just for God to bless them. Um, so I'm inviting you to join me in prayer. Um, my sister, Herlene, is uh, the one who invited me to, to talk to you guys today. Um, so I will be um, joining you guys in prayer. Um, I'm not a singer. My sister, Herlene, is a singer. But I do play the piano. So what I'm going to do right now is we're just going to play a couple of songs. Um, if you could follow along with me or sing along with me, you know the songs. Um, we're going to be singing Ferris Lord Jesus. I believe it's number 240 on the, on the SDA hymnal. So Ferris Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to sing along with me. Um, I'm what I play. And, and so that we can uh, start our prayer. Okay. You gotta sing along while I play. Ferris Lord Jesus, Ferris Lord Jesus, um, if we remind, we're going to open our Bibles right now to Psalms 121, okay, Psalms 121, if you know it, say it with me, wherever you are, and um, if you have your Bibles, you could open up to Psalms 121, I'm going to open up my Bible, give me a second, Psalms 121. Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, 
nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall watch thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. This psalm is a psalm that reminds us that where your help is going to come from, where your strength is going to come from, where your intelligence, your wisdom, where your skills come from, they all come from God who made heaven and earth. And he said that he won't let your foot to be moved. He's going to keep you. No matter what, he's going to keep you. I want to encourage you guys, as you are in the hospital rooms, as you are dealing with a patient who seems like is a lost cause, God is going to keep you. God is going to sustain you. No matter what, don't give up. No matter what, don't let anything keep you down. But always keep your eyes, keep your mind, uh, stay focused on God. Because God is going to keep you. Okay? We're going to sing a, um, another song. It's uh, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. If you know this song, sing along. Um, if not, just look it up in the hymnal. Um, again, I'm not a singer, but I, I do play the, the a musician. I am a musician. So if you sing along with me while I play, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Okay? says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and in his grace, right? So wherever you are, it may seem dark, it may seem gloomy, it may seem impossible, but we can always turn our eyes upon Jesus, and we could look full, look in his glorious face. Jesus' face is glorious. No matter what's going on around us, no matter how ugly people are, we can look on Jesus' face because His face is glorious. Okay? Um, I want to take the time right now to talk to you about um, the woman at the well. The woman at the, When the woman came to the well to draw water, she was just living life as usual, just going on in her daily life, just... Just doing things, not really focused on anything. She was just living life, right? Just like all of us were just living life before this virus came along. But all of a sudden, she came to the well. And there was Jesus. And Jesus just turned her life upside down. Jesus told her something that she wasn't expecting to hear. Right? Because she was just living her normal life. But Jesus exposed something in her. That made her look at herself. That made her 
wonder, you know, what have I been doing all this time? Right? And if Jesus hadn't given her this reality shock at the moment, she probably would have just kept going on with her life as normal, right? Just doing the same old things that she was doing before. Jesus told her, hey, look, yeah, you yeah, you don't have a husband. You had five husbands. And just, it's just like, you know, give her reality shock. And right now, many of us are in a reality shock. How many of us were really prepared for this virus? How many of us were prepared to live a life with where we have to stay home all the time and not congregate with people and not talk with anyone or, or not, not being able to, to touch anybody, right? We can't even, we can't even touch. Um, right now, the way that things are, um, we, our lives have been disrupted and we're looking at it like we weren't ready for this. Uh, this came and hit us by surprise. But you know what? I want to remind you that Jesus has a plan. And his plan is not for you to fail. And his plan is not for you to, 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 uh, to, 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 to catch a virus or to, to even be sick. But his plan is to save you. And through this, somehow through this situation, Jesus is trying to communicate something with you. Okay, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that God is trying to communicate with me at this time? Is it that I need to spend more time with my children? Is it that I need to spend more time at home with my husband? Do I need to spend more time connecting? Or do I need to spend less time um, with, you know, connected to other things, but that I need to focus on home? Maybe do I need to uh, sharpen my survival skills? Because pretty much we depend on every day going out to a restaurant, going out to movie theaters, um, doing all these things on the outside where if those things weren't there, what would happen to us, right? So ask, I want you to ask yourself today, what is God trying to communicate to me personally, right? Get, God does definitely has a message for the world, but I need you to think about yourself, what is God trying to communicate to you personally through this situation? As you were just living life normally, as you were just doing your day-to-day, -day, in and out, meeting with friends, going to parties, going to gatherings, you were just living life, but somehow your life is disrupted right now. What is God trying to communicate to you? What do you need to go back to? so that you can be full again, so that you do not depend on what you were doing before, but that you actually depend on God, okay? So I want you to, to think about that. As we pray, as we pray, I want, to, uh, I want you to pray in your hearts. Pray for the people that you are treating in the hospitals, people that you're gonna be seeing. I saw today that the cases in New York went way above 10,000. Uh, this is getting serious, and it's going to get even more serious for you guys who are going to be on the front lines, you healthcare workers who are going to be on the front lines of helping these people. As the hospitals get more and more crowded, as you uh, your demand, the demand for your time becomes greater and greater, okay? I want to pray that God will give you guys the strength to be able to continue to uh to, to just to be able to continue doing what you've been doing, but it's going to be on a larger scale. So you're going to need more strength. You're going to need more, more vitality. You're going to need more patience. And you're going to need more love so that you can uh, deal through this situation. So at this time, if you wouldn't mind praying with me, um, pray in your heart as I pray out loud. And, um, and uh, after that, We'll come back together and finish off uh, this time that we have together in prayer. Okay? Please bow your heads with me. Wherever you are, bow your heads. Take a position of reverence to God as we talk to our Father. Our Lord and our God, we are so grateful for you. You created the heavens and the earth. And you have did it in six days. We are here on this Sabbath day. Reminded that uh, you were the one that created the heavens and the earth, that it is you who made us and not we ourselves. 
that we are your people and that we are the sheep of your pasture. Lord God, we are facing a tremendous time right now. And Lord, you can see it's getting more and more serious as the days go by. Only you, know, only you, Lord, have the final number and you know where you are going to draw the line. And that you only you know where you're going to say is enough, is enough, and, and it's time to stop. But Father, we are asking that as we are trying to, as the healthcare workers are trying to save lives, and they're trying to uh, talk with people, and they're trying to treat people, and they are in the hospitals, and they don't have the right equipment that they need, or they don't have the, the right number of testing that they need, and as they, Lord, struggle to get through this time, Father, we, we're praying for more strength. We're praying for strength more than, than we've ever had before, Lord. In the, in the wilderness, when the children of Israel were walking, their sandals lasted 40 years. They've never had to change the sandals because you kept them. Lord, we are asking that you would keep these healthcare workers the same way that you're able to, you were able to keep uh, those, the children in, in, of Israel, Lord, who were walking, climbing mountains, and doing all those things for 40 years. You kept them, Lord, so we are asking to be kept. We are asking the healthcare workers, their, their mental, their mental uh, situation to be kept. We're asking that you may keep them physically, Lord. As um, some of them may not even have time to sit down and eat a proper meal to get the proper nutrition that they need as they are uh, trying to treat people. We are asking that you would keep their bodies, that you would keep their minds to going strong, that you would help them, Lord, to be patient in, um, patient in the hospital, patient with those who, the, the number of people who are coming in and, who are, and they're being tossed back and forth from person to person, Lord. We are asking that for patience because while they are asking for supplies, they may not be any. While they're asking for beds, there may not be any. And while they're asking for leadership, there may not be any. Lord, I'm praying that you would just help them to navigate through this time. And for any of those who may come through their doors, Lord, may they not only see a hospital or health care worker, but may they see Christ in them. Lord, trying to love them, trying to be patient, trying to um, to heal them of their diseases, trying to show them love at this and in the dark hours that they're facing, and let them continually to remember that you are with them, that your help, their help, will come from you, and you will um, be with them through every step of the way. Let us, Lord, not lose faith. Let us not lose heart. May our faith be increased through this process. May we see you through this process. May we have testimonies through this process and that we can continue to uh, show love for, uh, to, to others who come our way, Lord. Uh, Lord, I'm praying for the families of the healthcare workers while they are in the hospital and that, that their children may be safe, that their spouses may be safe, and that their home may be a safe home that they can come home to each and every day um, or whenever they can, Lord. I pray that you may uh, guard their vehicles, that their vehicles may, may be, be able to sustain, that they don't have any trouble. I pray, Lord, that everything that they have, Lord, that you would guard over them and give them again the strength to, to deliver care to those who come to them in the hospitals, Lord. Lord, we are praying for our country. We are praying that this disease will go away sooner than believe, Lord. That you would have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord, so that we can, um, can truly uh, be safe. Uh, so that our health can be preserved, Lord. And our lives can be preserved as well, Lord. So we want to thank you for all you're doing. All you continue to do for all of those healthcare workers. And Lord, we're praying that you would help us to do more so that we can save more lives and, and heal more people as well, Lord. Bring your healing power to the hospitals, Lord, and help them and help uh, the situations that we all are in. Lord, we want to say we thank you. We want to love you because we know that you've, you are uh, a great God despite what's going on. You are a good God. 
and that we want to thank you for what you're doing. Continue to do. Please, Lord, hear all our prayers. Hear the silent prayers of our hearts, and may you exercise them. May your Holy Spirit deliver them to you, to your throne, where, Lord, you can hear our prayers, and that you would do as we ask, not because we have merit, Lord, but because we pray through the blood and through the name of your Son, our, our Lord and our Savior, our Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, we thank you so much for all that you're doing. Um, we want to pray that you guys will continue to, like we say, continue to have strength, just to be patient as we go through this time and continue to love on one another. Um, as you guys are in the hospital, if you see one of your coworkers um, just, just losing strength or losing patience, um, pray over them and just encourage them, give them strength, letting them know that God is with them and you are are you are there to help also. Okay, so be a strength as you get your strength from God, be a strength for others as well. Okay. So I want to thank you guys for joining. I want to thank you guys for for being here and thank you for your prayers as well. I personally will continue to pray for all of you and um and just stay in the in the in in the stay in the mindset knowing that God is with you at all times and that uh, let him be a, a living well inside of you, a, a spring inside of you that's ever giving you hope, that's giving you more energy, more courage, and more strength to con continue through this time. Okay, uh, I'm going to play you out uh, one last song as, as, we, um, as we dismiss. It's just a song that says, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You can put your own words in there uh, as you as you see fit. I'm gonna play you out as you go. and thank you healthcare workers for all that you do for all of us thank you and god bless take care